Hey guys, you gotta start somewhere. I just put the shelf in. Starting it up, guys. Clean it up. This is going to hold the ATO. That you want your flow to be turbulent within your tank. But some electric. It's gonna make room for the 75 gallon build. asks about flow and cyanobacteria. How much flow? She said she has a 15 gallon tank with almost no flow in it from what it sounds like to me and she wants to know how much. What I usually recommend is that you want your flow to be turbulent within your tank but you don't want it to blow your sand around. So depending on what you have in your tank will determine how much flow you want. You want enough so there's some flow over the sand bed. Flow over the sand bed is a very helpful technique to aid in keeping cyanobacteria away, but there's no guarantee. Miguel asks if he can remove diatoms and hair algae with a brush. What I like to do with diatoms is as carefully as you can siphon them out with your hose. Don't do a large water chain, just enough to siphon them off the rocks and off the sand bed. Hair algae, you can use a brush. You might wanna be able to siphon that as you scrape it off. So turn your flow pumps off, turn your return pump off, and you can siphon it out as you scrape it off. If it's a small amount, you don't have to turn your overflow flow pump off. You just put some floss in there and some that goes over the overflow will collect in the floss. I have a little something first. I just can't talk. I have a little I have a little something to show you the first step in my 75 gallon DIY. Prepping for the shelf that I'm gonna put right in here guys. Starting it up guys. Clean it up. Here's the shell, clear coated it with some oil base polyurethane, three quarter inch plywood with a sanded finish. Looks kind of nice. It's gonna go right in there. Here's some oak wood blocking. I'm going to attach one of these to each individual leg for support of the shelf. Toonfully asks about how much Kalkwasser, if all his parameters are great, he's got a 29 gallon and he wants to know how much Kalkwasser, if he should put it in, or if he should wait until he sees his calcium and alkalinity parameters changing. And what I told him was what I've always told you guys. Kalkwasser adds so much more than just calcium. It's gonna help raise your pH. It's gonna help raise your alkalinity. It's also been known to precipitate phosphate. So it's a good idea. And if your parameters are okay, then just put a small amount. Just check your parameters every other day or so, the first week or two that you're putting it in the tank. All right, so you can see what I did here. There's the shelf, and all I did under here was this kind of thing. You can see what I did under there. I pre-drilled holes so they really fit snug and deep into the leg. I did that on all four sides. So there it is from back this distance here. I asked about brown jelly disease. You know, guys, I have never had brown jelly disease, but I know what it is. <laughs> most cases, if it's not running rampant and you keep your eye on it, a water change can sometimes help. He said it wasn't on the fleshy tissue of his frog spawn, so that's a good sign. Just keep an eye on it. Sometimes I like to do a little larger water change if something like that shows up and see what happens. If it gets out of hand, you may have to remove it and dip your coral. This ATO feeds this tank the five gallon up here and the 20 gallon. What's going to happen is I have to move this down to the shelf and my concern is will the small ATO pump be able to pump this high? It says it's four foot head pressure and this is more than four feet. Let's see what happens when I move it down there. Corey's got six pajama cardinals coming in from an online vendor, and he asked me about, do I drip acclimate? He 
he's seeing a little controversy in how to acclimate incoming fish from an online vendor. The way I've always done it is temperature acclimate and put them right in the tank. The fish are in that bag for more than 24 hours and it's building up a lot of ammonia in there. When you open that bag, you'll also get a pH spike inside that water in that bag, plus the ammonia. So the controversy is everybody likes to drip acclimate. Would you rather your fish sit in the bag for another 45 minutes with high ammonia and pH or put it right into your tank where your parameters are fine? I'm not saying it's a flawless way. If the fish is healthy to begin with, they usually withstand that type of entrance into the tank. All right, so what we got here is three pumps in here. The first thing I do is I unplug them so they don't go off and run dry. All right, this one and this one. And they're all off. These are the smart ATOs, by the way. They're pretty good. They're pretty good if you're around all the time. Sometimes the sensor doesn't catch the water level going down and they don't come on and you have to kind of move them and they come on that's happened to me three or four times i'm always here so it's not really a problem johnny five has an issue with velvet i linked a great article in the comments section in his comments Velvet is extremely contagious if it's in your tank. If it's on one fish, it could spread within days to all your other inhabitants. It does not affect invertebrates or corals. Get your fish out as quickly as possible in a hospitalization tank, copper treatment. If you're concerned about the display tank, 75 days without any fish, in your display tank. So that's what you're faced with, Johnny. Good luck and check out that article. It's really, really good. So glad that five gallon can still get ATO water from that distance. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.